So we're at seven, 70 million miles already for Navigate on Autopilot. It's something really, really, really cool. And I think one thing that is worth kind of calling out on this is that we're continuing to accelerate and keep learning from this data. Like Andre talked about this data engine. As this accelerates up, we actually do make more and more assertive lane changes. We are learning from these cases where people intervene, either because they failed to detect a merge correctly or because they wanted the car to be a little more peppy in different environments, and we just want to keep making that progress. So to start all of this, we begin with trying to understand the world around us. And we talked about the different sensors in the vehicle, but I want to like, dig in a little bit more here. We have eight cameras, but then we also have additionally 12 ultrasonic sensors, a radar, an inertial measurement unit, GPS. And then one thing we forget about is we also have the pedal and steering actions. So not only can we look at what's happening around the vehicle, we can look at how humans chose to interact with that environment. And so I'll talk to this clip right now. This basically is showing what's happening today in the car, and we're continuing to push this forward. So we start with a single neural network. We see the detections around it. We then build all that together with multiple neural networks and multiple detections. We bring in the other sensors, and we convert that into what Elon calls a vector space, an understanding of the world around us. And this is something where, as we continue to get better and better at this, we're moving more and more of this logic into the neural networks themselves. And the obvious end game here is that the neural network looks across all the cars, brings in all the information together, and just ultimately outputs a source of truth for the world around us. And this is actually not like an artist rendering in many senses. This is actually the output of one of the debugging tools that we use on the team every day to understand what the world looks like around us. So another thing that I think is really, really exciting to me, I, I think when I do hear about sensors like LiDAR, a common question is around just having extra sensor modalities. Like, why not have some redundancy on the vehicle? And I want to dig in on one thing that's not, it's not always obvious with neural networks themselves. So we have a neural network running on our, say, wide fisheye camera. That neural network is not making one prediction about the world. It's making many separate predictions, some of which actually audit each other. So as a real example, we have the ability to detect a pedestrian. That's something we train very, very carefully on and put a lot of work into. But we also have the ability to detect obstacles in the roadway. And a pedestrian is an obstacle. And it's shown differently to the neural network. It says, oh, there's a thing I can't drive through. And these together combine to give us an increased sense of what we can and can't do in front of the vehicle and how to plan for that. We then do this across multiple cameras because we have overlapping fields of view in many places around the vehicle. In front, we have a particularly large number of overlapping fields of view. Lastly, we can combine that with things like the radar and the ultrasonics to build these extremely precise understandings of what's happening in front of the car. We can use that both to learn future behaviors that are very accurate, but we can also build very accurate predictions of how things will continue to happen in front of us. So one example I think is really exciting is we can actually look at bicyclists and people and not just ask, where are you now, but where are you going? And this is actually the heart of what we're doing for our, our next generation automatic emergency braking system, which will not just stop for people in your path, but it'll stop for people who are going to be in your path. And that's running in shadow mode right now. We'll go out to the fleet this quarter, and I'll talk about shadow mode in a second. So when you want to start a feature like this for navigating on autopilot on the highway system, you can start by learning from data. And you can just look at how humans do things today. What is their assertiveness profile? How do they change lanes? What causes them to either abort or change it, like their maneuvers? And you can see things that are not immediately obvious, like, oh, yeah, simultaneous merging is rare, but very complicated and very important. And you can start to build opinions about different scenarios, such as a fast overtaking vehicle. So this is what we do when we initially have some algorithms we want to try out. We can put them on the fleet, and we can see what they would have done in a real-world scenario, such as this car that's overtaking us very quickly. And this is taken from our actual simulation environment, showing different paths that we have considered taking and how those overlay on the real-world behavior of a user. When you get those algorithms tuned up and you feel good about them, specifically, and this is really taking that output of the neural network, putting it in that vector space, and building and tuning these parameters on top of it, ultimately a thing that we can do through more and more machine learning, you go into a controlled deployment, which for us is our early access program. And this is you get this out to a couple thousand people who are really excited to give you highly vigilant but useful feedback about how this behaves, not in an open loop, but in a closed loop way in the real world. And you watch their interventions. And we talked about this, but like, when somebody takes over, we can actually get that clip, try to understand what happens. And one thing we can really do is we can actually play this back, again, in an open loop way and ask, as we build our software, are we getting closer or further from how humans behave in the real world? And one thing which is super cool with the full self-driving computers, we're actually building our own racks and infrastructure. So we basically can put four of our full self-driving computers fully racked up, build these into our own cluster, and actually run this very sophisticated data infrastructure to actually understand over time 
as we tune and fix these algorithms, are we getting closer and closer to how humans behave, and ultimately, can we, get, can we exceed their capabilities? And so once we had this, we were really good about it. We wanted to do our wide rollout. But to start, we actually asked everybody to confirm the car's behavior via stock confirm. And so we started making lots and lots of predictions about how we should be navigating the highway. We asked people to tell us, is this right or is this wrong? And this is, again, a chance to churn that data engine. And we did spot some really tricky and interesting long tails of, in this case, I think a really fun example, like there are these very interesting cases of simultaneous merging where you start going and then somebody moves either behind or before you, not noticing you. And what is the appropriate behavior here? And what are the tunings of the neural network we need to do to be super precise about the appropriate behaviors here? We worked, we tuned these in the background, we made them better. And over the course of time, we got nine million successfully accepted lane changes. And we use these, again, with our continuous integration infrastructure um, to actually understand, oh, do we think we're ready? And this is one thing where full self-driving is also really exciting to me, since we own the entire software stack, straight from the kernel patching all the way to the, ISO, like the, the tuning on the image signal processor, we can start to collect even more data that is even more accurate. And this allows us to do even better and better tuning at these faster iteration cycles. And so, Earlier this month, we were kind of thought we're ready to deploy an even more seamless version of Navigate on Autopilot on the highway system. And that seamless version does not require a stock confirm. So you can sit there, relax, put your hand on the wheel, and just oversee what the car is doing. And in this case, we're actually seeing over 100,000 automated lane changes every single day on the highway system. And this is something that's just like super cool to us to deploy at scale. And the thing that I'm kind of most excited about from all this is the actual life cycle of this and how we actually are able to turn that data engine crank faster and faster and faster with time. And I think one thing that's really becoming very clear is the combination of the infrastructure we have built, the tooling we built on top of that, and the combined power of the full self-driving computer, I believe we can do this even faster as we move Navigate on Autopilot from the highway system onto city streets. And so yeah, with that, I'll hand off to Elon. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, to the best of my knowledge, all those uh, lane changes have, have occurred with zero accidents. Is that that is correct? correct, yeah. I watch every single accident. So, yeah. so it, it's conservative, obviously. Um, but but it's uh, to have hundreds of thousands going to millions of lane changes and zero accidents uh, is, uh, I think, a, a great achievement by the Tesla team. Yeah. Thank you.